Don't just go down. We're on the same side, right? Power of the camera. See, the camera is cop repellent. <laughs> See, it's the power of the camera, man. You get the camera on them. I know. It's like raid. <laughs> I know. They're very polite. Although this crowd doesn't look particularly dangerous. <laughs> no. No. Where are you from? I'm actually from the Jersey Shore, but I live down I mean, in Maryland you, now. Who you represent? Occupy DC. Occupy DC, okay. Been involved with them since the beginning. So. Very good. How is the movie? Down there we got an office. We got an office two blocks away from the White House. And uh, it's going well. Yeah. Yeah. It's moving along slowly, but... So you're gonna have a very active summer. Yeah, but it's, we're hoping. No matter what, it's come election time, and then it, January 1st, there's supposed to be a whole bunch of austerity cuts, and who knows what's gonna happen with the student loan thing, you know? It's, it's obvious, I mean, you know, unless they, unless they elect slate of candidates, they're gonna, the interest rates are going to go up, the unemployment's going to stop at the end of the year, uh, yeah. you know, except for you know, the people on the regular, I mean, the extensions will stop. The tax cuts are all going to drop because they're never going to negotiate anything. It's right. going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. The European banks are in major trouble. That That is scary situation, but, you know, my hope is in the Occupy movement. You know, the Occupy movement people, they're making sense. And and I'm sure you, you've seen it here. It's growing. Yeah. It's, it's going to have to be a concerted effort with a lot of groups to push back against this. They're so entrenched. And if you look at the amount of money that's being spent in the campaigns now, it's, it's incredible. They have billionaires that, you know, have taken nothing of bunking down to but if the austerity cuts impact that many people? You're going to have to have people really, really, really hurting to yeah. wake them up yeah. and really get them active. You have a lot of people like Occupy that are paying attention to this and trying to bring notice to it, but not enough. So did you write this thing on the vocal rule? I did. Excellent. Excellent. It's one of the best flyers I've seen on the vocal rule. Thank you. I appreciate it. Where are they at now with the vocal rule? I know the banks have been lobbying. The Dodd-Frank has been passed. Okay, the final provisions of the vocal rule are being negotiated right now, which is one of the reasons that I kind of insisted that this be a part of the protest, whatever part of it it is. You know? um, and uh, they are going to be implemented by July 21st. People like Jamie Dimon, the head of Chase Bank across the street, um, has been lobbying against the rules at this point, but he's also, you know, got caught with his pants down a few, you know, a couple right. weeks ago with the two, three billion dollar losses in rising. So we're hoping that that gives a little more leverage when they write the rules. One of the things that they were trying to do, for instance, was uh, say that, you know, uh, limit, they try to have a lot of loopholes in the vocal rules. So they wanted to say, like, if a trade occurred overseas, it wouldn't be affected by the legislation. 
And basically the legislation says that if, you know, we're not breaking you up like Glass Steagall is. Uh, that, you know, at, at this point, bringing back Glass Steagall may cause more problems than it's worth, only because these banks are so big and it's going to be very hard to separate out those assets. But what we're saying is, look, if you're Chase Bank and you're JP Morgan Chase, you have your, and part of what you own are these commercial banks. And we have to insure these assets for $250,000 each depositor. Then you're not going to take that money and start investing on these cockamamie bets, you know, that are, you know, that are, that are really gambling. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they don't want, they don't like that because they don't want to be regulated at all. And Jamie Volker sits on the, on the New York Fed. Right. Too, which I is a conflict of interest. I read part of it and yeah. you mentioned the pension scam. And uh, Frontline, did you see the Frontline piece on Wall Street? Um, they, Frontline did a, a segment on the Wall Street scam and the rise of the Occupy Wall yeah, well, Street they, movement. They, 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 misrepresent, they misrepresented all these like all these shitty mortgages to you know uh, to investors, you know, in pension funds like you know the teachers, the cops. Well, and the, it, it's way worse now. Of course, it they, they interviewed hedge fund. Uh, managers and these head fund managers make these are just worker bees in these head funds make up to 10 million dollars and the way they do it is they figure out algorithms math solutions actually, where they go in ahead of unions and school teachers or all I these things one of the, I met one of the mathematicians who actually did this she's now working with Occupy in New York yeah. And she's got this, uh, she's a PhD in math from MIT, and she was one of the people who worked on these algorithms. She now, you know, joined the, joined, she left the dark side, you know, she's working with a different groups up in Columbia now to try to, like, fight some of this, but you're absolutely, you're 100%. But right. they would go in a few hours before, buy up all the stock, right. then the pension plan would put their money in, so and it would skyrocket immediately, right. and then... They would sell and it would drop. So all the people who put their money in for the pension plan are hurt by the hedge fund managers doing the day trading, where it's, it's it shoots up and then they grab a big chunk of that pension plan from that stock, and then the stock drop drops immediately. So it's terrible, and it's and it's a it's a form of insider trading. Uh, you're absolutely Where, and it's affecting a vast amount of the population and it needs to be stopped you got a lot of that here in Jersey <laughs> uh, you have a share of them but not not a whole lot they're not as vocal as well as that guy. No, no, we gotta get out there. This is Kentucky, exactly. You know? I'm like, yeah. I'm in New York City, I'm often at the front because I'm so. There's a conservative faction. We have a very, very conservative congressman in the 5th District. He's one of the worst. We are the 99%. Guy Scott Garrett, he's on the Financial Services Committee. Too big to fail. Is there a way to <laughs> campaign oh against him? They redistricted, they cut this district up in such a way that it's, they have not had a Democrat. Congressman since the 1930s, and they only served for two years. But we generally have had a more more, more moderate person. But there are no more moderates in the party anymore. It's uh, been completely co-opted. He's one of the worst of the Tea Party people. So what's your name? My name is Mitchell. Mitchell. Good to meet. You. Good to meet you too, Bob.